Okay, thanks for the invitation. It's a great pleasure to give a talk. Uh, today I'm going to talk uh, about a joint work with uh, Peter Hawks and uh, Xiang. So it's a uh, uh, higher index theorem for proper Lie group action. Okay, so uh, first uh, uh, let me uh, say the basic uh, setting. So in my I talk this G will be a connected uh, uh, reductive Lie group. So, or even uh, you can just take a, think about G as a more specific. You can think about G as a uh, the two R. So it's a very explicit uh, Lie group. So that uh, is a Riemannian manifold with uh, on which this uh, uh, Lie group G acts uh, properly. Uh, Co-compact means that the quotient space is com compact, and also it preserves the metric. It's a isometric uh, action. Okay, so and uh, next T is a G equivalent uh, elliptic differential operator on the manifold the, uh, the X. So you can think of uh, D, for example, actually in my talk, D will be a spin C or twisted uh, spin C Dirac operator on the manifold G equivalent. Okay, and uh, another uh, uh, thing is uh, the S of G. So S of G is a uh, uh, Schwartz algebra on G uh, in the sense of uh, Lafouk. So this is a uh, convolution. So the product structure is given by the convolution. So F uh, convolution with G. So this is the product structure. And uh, the point is that this one is a dense subalgebra uh, inside the reduced sister al algebra of G and closed under holomorphic uh, functional calculus. The key property uh, uh, I will use today is that uh, the K theory of the, uh, so this is a smaller subalgebra um, than the reduced sister algebra of G. And the key property I'm going to use today is uh, they have the same K theory. I think this is, uh, uh, oh. oh, no thanks. Okay, no, 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 we're back. Sorry for the interruption. Um, okay, so that's, uh, yes, the key property I'm going to use is uh, they have the same K theory. And uh, by the assembly map used in the Baumkong conjecture, that uh, we can get an index which live in the K theory here, which is also a K theory here. So this is, uh, um, yeah, this is the assembly map in the Baumkong conjecture. And the goal of uh, my talk today is that I will explain how to extract a numerical index from the element, in a, because uh, this index lives in the K theory of this uh, Schwarz algebra. And the main goal of my talk is um, I will explain how to extract a numerical index and uh, also prove a topological formula. And if I have time permitted, I would uh, also discuss its relation with the representation theory. So this is the goal of my talk. Of, 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 of course, there are many ways to extract a numerical index, a numerical number, but I will just uh, describe a, a new way to get a num number and how it's uh, how to compute it uh, using topological formula and uh, possibly how it's related to representation theory of the Lie group G. Okay. So to begin with, let me uh, begin with the, the start of this story. That is the, of course, uh, following this line, the first important, uh, the beginning, the, the great start is the von Neumann trace. So uh, this is the let, uh, in the same setting, I will let K to be the maximal compact subgroup. And the manifold the X, uh, I can, this is the most important one. This is the, take it to be the homogeneous space, G mod K. So you know, in many cases, the general manifold can be reduced to, uh, the case of the homogeneous space. So this is the, uh, the uh, most uh, example of the um, manifold with the proper co-compact action of G. So if the G equal to SL2, uh, uh, the SLNR, and K will be SON, and the homogeneous space just look like this one. So uh, this is uh, uh, well known. Uh, um, um, so this, we can take the, by taking the von Neumann trace, 
we can actually, in this case, we will get a real num number. So real number. And if we apply to the index, uh, the Dirac operator, elliptic Dirac operator, uh, elliptic differential operator on the homogeneous space uh, X mod G, this is uh, uh, a formula proved by Karl Moskowitz. They say that, uh, yes, they can uh, calculate it. This is uh, A hat class, this is chain character. This C is a cutoff function on the cotangent bundle. So this is, um, so this tells you how to calculate this uh, numerical index uh, in a topological way. This, uh, this formula is approved for homogeneous space G mod K and then later uh, for general remaining manifold with a co-compact proper G action, the same formula was proved by Han Wang uh, in her thesis, I believe. Uh, uh, on the other hand, this uh, numerical number is very, uh, has a, in, has a representation theoretic interpretation. This is by a work of Atiyah Schmidt that because uh, uh, the trace this number, this numerical number turns out to be the formal degree of the discrete series representation uh, of G. So this is uh, all, uh, another way to say this one, it is uh, the Planchot of measure for the discrete series representation of G. So yeah, so this is the uh, great start how the, this is how the story begins. Okay, so if you have any question, uh, feel free to stop me. Uh, okay, so another way to uh, look at the Monet band trace is by consider the index pairing, uh, because uh, if you, we are index, this is a D, you are calculator, give an index living here. Uh, the k theory of the Schwarz algebra, which is uh, isomorphic to the k theory of the reduced sister algebra. To get a numerical number, there's a uh, index pairing is you can pair the k theory class with a periodic cyclical homology. So if it's a k zero, then you should uh, pair the even one. If uh, it's k one, you should pair with the odd. So any of the pairing you should get a numer numerical number. Okay, so that's uh, how to how should we interpret it uh, uh, or how should we understand the Neumann trace from this viewpoint is that uh, we can consider the following map. So for any Schwarz function f on the group G, we can just evaluate at it as the identity. E is the identity element in the group G. So uh, this is a map from S of G to C and you can check uh, tau E F1 convolution with F2 is the same as the evaluation of F2 convolution with uh, uh, F1. So that is to say this equation basically tells you this tau E uh, define a zero degree uh, cyclic co-cycle on the Schwarz algebra of G. So uh, this tau E is living here so that so you can pair uh, so this tau E with any uh, index G in, in the uh, the index in the, this k theory group. So you, after you by the pairing you get a numerical number. What this numerical number gave you is exactly the um, Monoy, taking the Monoyman trace. So this is uh, but uh, this uh, um, uh, this suggests that any pairing should get give you a number. So this is uh, how we uh, are going to generalize. Uh, there's a monoyman trace to other case and the, probably this is also the name higher came from. Okay, so next uh, is the, I will talk about uh, orbital integral. So that uh, this uh, tau e you can consider, this is uh, evaluate at identity. So the orbital integral, um, say, when I say the orbit means that the orbit of the a joint the conjugation action on G. So the identity itself is a single or, or, or a single uh, the orbit of uh, E. More generally, if you take G to be any semi-simple uh, semi element in G, that uh, we can define orbital integral. So we can uh, uh, define Schwarz algebra of G. We can consider its uh, integration over the conjugacy class uh, at G. So if G equal to identity, this is the same, oh, oh sorry, here, the G, the, uh, the G is the centralizer of this element G under the conjugation action in the group G. So if G equal to identity, then this is just the evaluate at uh, identity. 
And uh, if G is uh, not identity, you just replace it by the conjugacy class uh, through G. So then you can also check that uh, tau G, uh, it uh, satisfies this property. So um, if here star is the convolution product, uh, which is the, uh, the algebra of structure in the Schwarz algebra of G. Because it satisfies this property, tau G also define a zero degree cyclic cohomology. So that we have, so this uh, in particular, G, when G equal to identity, this is uh, what we discussed in the last uh, page, this, this that generalized the uh, non man traits. But uh, if a G is uh, any other non, um, other semi-simple element, then we can also get a numerical number. So this numerical number is studied by Hox, Peter Hox and Han Wang. That uh, by pairing, this is uh, in the this one is in the zero degree cyclic uh, cohomology by pairing with the element given by the index. That uh, they uh, obtain a formula. So that the formula is uh, obtained. Uh, you, they, they get an integration formula on the fixed point here. Tg is the fixed point uh, of uh, on the manifold by the action of g, and uh, Cg is the cutoff function, and uh, this uh, new is the normal bundle of the fixed point inside E. So this is like the one over, one over the euler class of the normal bundle. And in particular, if G equal to identity, then XG, uh, if, X, if G equal to identity, XG just equal to the X, then this reduced to the formula proved by Kong Moscovici and for many both, that is formula proved by Han Wang. And, but uh, for general uh, for other G, this is a, a fixed point of theorem. Uh, for non-compact Lie group action, uh, for if uh, G is uh, a torus, then this is well, well, the well-known atia bot siegel fixed point of theorem. So this is a generalization from uh, compact uh, Lie group to non-compact Lie group. Okay, so this is a topological form, uh, formula. So if the manifold is a homogeneous space, we say if manifold is a homogeneous space, the pairing with the tau e, the monoiment trace is the, the its representation theoretic interpretation is that the, the numerical number you get is the formal degree of the discrete series representation. And uh, for semi-simple element G, so you get a, in this way, you get a family of cyclic co-cycles. So you get a, a family of uh, numbers. Those family of numbers actually correspond to the character of the discrete series representation of G. If you, you don't know discrete series, that's fine. It's just a, a very nice behaved uh, representation, uh, unitary representation of the group G. Okay, so this is uh, what happened. Uh, for the orbital integral. So there's a nice topological formula. Okay, and this is uh, uh, how it's, uh, oh, so, um, so you can see uh, this formula basically says that uh, the character of representation or the formal degree of the representation is, uh, can be calculated in a topological way, either using topological formula or fixed point of theorem. This is how the index theory and the representation theory are related, okay? So, yes, let's see. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, that, uh, uh, let me make one remark here is that uh, as you change this uh, G, that uh, um, D group G, it is, uh, this numerical number is not continuous. So for example, if uh, uh, G is, uh, uh, if this G take it to be G regular part, and uh, then it's, um, uh, and then when you take the limit as G goes to identity, this numerical number could uh, jump, jump. So this, uh, it's not a continuous math. Okay. Uh, next, uh, in order to uh, tell you, next I, why I'm going to tell you why sometimes we need a higher index. So here you can see those uh, tau g or tau e are all cyclic co-cycles, zero degree. So this is the euro index theorem. And uh, next, uh, for the rest of uh, the talk, I will uh, first try to uh, uh, I will try to explain to you why sometimes we need to go higher. So, in order to tell you the reason why we need to uh, go higher, let me tell you what is the rank of a Lie group. 
So that's the K, so the G is the connected reductive Lie group as before. And the K is a maximal compact subgroup of G. Um, and the T is the maximal, or the Gadan subgroup of K. And the K is a subgroup of G. H is the Gadan subgroup of G. So we say the rank of K is just the dimension, the uh, maximal torus is just a building group. So the rank of uh, K is just uh, the dimension of T. Rank of G is the dimension of uh, that because K is a subgroup of G. So in general, rank of uh, K is definitely smaller than the uh, smaller or equal, uh, no, no bigger than the rank of G. So when they are equal, we say this group G is uh, equal rank. In particular, if the group G itself is compact, it's always equal rank. Equal rank means just this, uh, the rank of G equal to rank of K. So the following are equivalent. That uh, G is the equal rank. That is to say, this T is not only Gadang subgroup of K, but also a Gadang subgroup of uh, G. So that, that is to say, G has a compact Gadang subgroup. In general, this H, uh, it's a billion subgroup, may not be compact. For example, G equal to R, then uh, this Gadan subgroup is the R itself. So uh, if G is the equal rank, it also implies equivalent to say G has the discrete series representation. So this is, as I said, this is, uh, I'm not going to uh, spend much, uh, I'm not going to explain what is the discrete series representation, but it's just that you should think about this one as uh, some nice uh, special type of uh, unitary representation of the Lie group G. Uh, and uh, those, uh, those discrete series representation appear discreetly in the unitary view. So another way that is to say, oh, so uh, the tempered uh, uh, due, uh, the tempered due is just uh, the, the unitary representation at its due space topologically are uh, not, so it should be, uh, if it is not an equal rank, then the, so uh, not, um, yes, uh, so that is to say, this, this is equivalent to say non equal rank. So that is to say, if it is not an equal rank, the its due space turns out to be continuous. For example, if G equal to R, so if uh, G equal to Rn, that its due space is also isomorphic to Rn. So you can see this as a topological space, it is uh, um, continuous. And if G equal to say torus Tn and uh, G hat is just a Zn, so you can see this is the uh, discrete. So that's uh, the uh, description of the, yeah. Okay, for example, there are many examples of uh, equal rank case and non equal rank case. For example, in my talk, the G, I was thinking about, uh, you can think about G as the uh, SLNR. This N is uh, from one, two, uh, two, two, three, four, five. And it turns out SLNR is equal rank only when N equal to two. So for any N greater than two, SL3R, SL4R, it's never going to be equal rank. It's always a non equal rank. And even the group, the as simple as Rn, it is a non equal rank. And you can check because uh, this just to calculate what is, uh, 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 find out what, what's uh, the maximal compact subgroup of G. And you can find out it's the Gadang subgroup. You can see the equal rank and the non equal rank. Okay, so this is about the rank of Lie group. Uh, the reason we need to go higher, it is because the following vanishing result. So the, this is a, a result. This is an easy fact to check. You can see that, uh, uh, so the, the fact says that uh, if G is a non-equal rank, so if it is a G equal to, for example, if G equal to SLNR, when N is greater than two, then any this orbital integral pair with the index always equal to zero. In particular, if G equal to identity, that is to say the L2 index always equal to zero. So because of this vanishing result, it tells you if, you, uh, if it is non-equal rank, if you, then you cannot use the orbital integral or the L2 index to detect, to get an interesting numerical number. One example will be G equal to R2. Okay, 
So if G equal to R2, the manifold is also R2 on which this G X by translation. And we can just take D to be the double operator on, on, on R2. So we identify R2 as a complex plane C. And uh, it's uh, easy to see that the kernel of this double operator and its co-kernel are both trivial. So it has no in index. So that uh, for any numerical index you get, the, it's for Neumann trace, it's always zero. It's, uh, so that's uh, why we want to, do, so the question now is that, uh, how can we extract, extract a non-zero numerical index for the non-equal rank case, even for the group when the group G is just R, Rn? This is the simplest uh, uh, example you can think of. So the solution is go higher. What do I mean by go higher? What that means that uh, you should, uh, what we did before, no matter it's L2 index, monoman trace, or the orbital integral, we always take the element in the zero dimension cyclic cohomology. So that if you want to detect some interesting information for the non-equal rank case, then you should pair with some element uh, from cyclic cohomology with degree greater than zero. So this is what I mean by higher. And the one, um, one representation theoretic interpretation of higher means that uh, if it is non-equal rank, its due space has dimension greater than zero, it's continuous. So you cannot expect to use something zero dimensional to detect something uh, with the dimension higher than zero. So that's uh, a philosophical interpretation of why when the G has a non-equal rank, this uh, pairing equal to zero. So, and uh, of course you can check this uh, fact uh, without using any representation theory. What I'm trying to say is that uh, if you happen to know representation theory, there's another way to explain why this, uh, where this uh, vanishing result come from. Okay, so following this line, so now the, uh, yes, the keyword here is uh, we need to go higher. We need to go to higher cyclic cohomology. So following this line, let me tell you, uh, so towards this direction, there's uh, one uh, approach that is uh, um, worked by Flam, Posthuma, and uh, my collaborator, Xiang Tang. They generalize this L2 in the index. So L2 index, as I explained, it could uh, uh, consider L2 index or the monomial trace as the orbital integral at the identity element. So what do they do is that uh, they uh, start from differential, differential group cohomology and uh, they, uh, for any element in the group cohomology, they construct a cyclic co-cycle and uh, those, uh, oh, uh, um, and give a element in the cyclic cohomology and uh, they can pair with this uh, cyclic cohomology with the index and they get a higher index pairing and they prove a topological formula. So uh, uh, their work um, by Flum, post Huma, and Tang, uh, their work should consider as a generalization of the L2 index or a generalization of the orbital integral at identity. And uh, also uh, Piazza and post Huma, they use this uh, a higher L2 index to solve some geometrical problems such as the positive scalar curvature and something or something. Uh, and also some, they get some generalization of this result. But today I want to tell you a different way to go higher. So we want to go higher orbital integral. So it's uh, not quite the uh, higher L2 in, in, the, in uh, L2 in the index, but higher orbital in, integral. So we have to use some idea of a higher orbital integral. I will tell you a different way to construct cyclic co-cycles. So we, together with uh, Xiang, we, we find a way, just use the group, uh, use some uh, Lie group uh, structure from the Lie group, and uh, we find a, a different way to construct cyclic co-cycles. And uh, for those cyclic co-cycles, we can get a higher index pairing. And uh, with the, together with the uh, Peter Hawks and Xiang, we prove a topological formula. So in our construction of the higher orbital integral, it turns out it's very close related to Hart-Schneider's Plancher theorem. So um, from the beginning, it's very related to the representation theory, but uh, we will see if I can say much about that. But uh, in, in today, in my talk, I will focus on the geometry side. I will say something about representation, but uh, 
um, I want to say that uh, just keep this in mind. This uh, or the higher orbital integral we construct uh, has a very interesting interpretation in representation uh, theory. Okay, so right. Next, uh, so next I'm going to tell you uh, the construction of the higher orbital integral. So, and also it tells you a uh, uh, different way to construct uh, cyclic co cycles. So, in order to do that, we need some uh, preparation in uh, uh, about in the theory of Lie groups. So, not about the, we don't need any representation theory to construct the co cycle. We just need to, um, yeah, to play with the, ma the, the matrix. So, as I said, in general, G is a connected reductive Lie group. In particular, in my talk, it's enough to take G to be SLNR. And uh, K is the maximal compact subgroup. And uh, if G equal to SLNR, K is just SLN inside SLNR. And uh, we need to take a parabolic subgroup. Parabolic subgroup in the case of SLNR, this slash means that uh, if you G equal to SLNR, so you can take P to be the upper triangular matrix. So this is a parabolic subgroup. Uh, and uh, the parabolic subgroup have a, a decomposition. It can be right in the uh, product form of uh, MAN, where the point here is that the M equals to, uh, is a reductive uh, Lie subgroup. But this M, the uh, new subgroup we get, the reductive group we get M, turns out always have an equal rank. And A is the just an abelian. Uh, group. It is always isomorphic to Rn. In the case of uh, SLNR, you can just take A to be the diagonal matrix with a positive uh, and uh, the so on the uh, along the diagonal, it's all positive num the, uh, the numbers. And uh, N is a neopotent subgroup. And uh, in the case of SLNR, this uh, N is uh, or the upper triangular matrix with uh, one along the diagonal. So this is a parabolic subgroup. So, right, uh, so let me maybe just let's say if G equal to SL2R, then K is SL2, and uh, you can take a P, it's just the matrix in the following form, zero. And A is just the A, zero, zero, one over A. And this uh, N is just in the form of, uh, mm, uh, wrong star, zero star. Uh, here is uh, one. And M, actually, in this case, is just as uh, to Z2. It's a discrete. Okay, so oh, oh, uh, it's, uh, I need to point out that the M, although it is always a, a least subgroup of equal rank, but it might be disconnected. So that uh, MAN is uh, something, uh, is a parabolic subgroup. And uh, uh, an important effect we will use, uh, which play an essential role in our construction of cyclic co cycle, is that uh, M actually commutes with A and MN normalizes M. So, norm N is the neopotent subgroup. Um, by the Iwasawa decomposition, every element G can be write as uh, KMAN. So, that is to say, every G can be write as uh, KMAN here. Uh, that uh, uh, K may have some non-trivial intersection with M, so that uh, the way to write G as a KMAN, this uh, K and uh, M may not be unique, but how you write it as the, uh, uh, but the A part and N part is always uh, unique. On the other hand, uh, because uh, A is a billion, A is uh, always isomorphic to Rn, so A can be write as the exponential of its Lie algebra, so that uh, then we can get a map, H map, which map from G, the group G, to the uh, vector space, the Lie algebra of A. So we just uh, use this decomposition, use this uh, Iwasawa decomposition, we get a map. So that uh, by choosing a normal, also normal ba the basis, because uh, this uh, AN has the structure of Euclidean space, so that uh, by choosing a base, we can uh, have a, um, several functions. So this every HI turns out to be a uh, smooth function on the group G. So yes, so this is a map. So in this way, use this uh, for any parabolic subgroup, we get a whole bunch of uh, function HI. This uh, HI will play an essential role in our construction of the cyclic code cycles. Okay. 
So next, uh, so this is uh, this slide. This page is about uh, parabolic subgroup. Uh, next page, okay, I'm going to tell you the construction of the higher orbital integral, so that we fix a parabolic subgroup P. We decompose it as a M A N, and we denote the dimension of A equal to N. So N is the dimension of A. We are going to define a function here. So here, this n is just the dimension of a. So the definition of this function c is that uh, it's uh, here sn is the permutation group of uh, n elements. So tau is any permutation. Uh, tau here, this one is just the sign of the permutation. So you can see this uh, h of uh, tau 1, g1 times k up the product up to uh, h of tau n, um, g n times k. So here, h of tau n comes from h and the function h i from here. So we get a, a smooth fun the function on here. But here's a warning that uh, this function c for any fixed k, even k's identity, this uh, c is not a group co-cycle unless g is abelian. So I'm, I'm, I, I make this remark because uh, it's, uh, this construction may make you think of the construction uh, from uh, differentiable group cohomology, but I won't tell you uh, the construction we use here is different from the group, cohomo group cohomology because uh, this C is not group co-cycle. Okay, now the definition of the cycle is that uh, for any uh, Schwartz function on G, F0 up to Fn, and we also fix the semi-simple element, not in the group G, but we want this semi-simple element X to live in the uh, subspace, subgroup M. M is the uh, M in here. So of course, here you can take uh, X to be identity. So the definition of the higher orbital in the integral is that you first need to fix a parabolic subgroup and element X in uh, uh, element X in M. So the definition is that uh, H is uh, the m, the m x is the centralizer of the element x under the adjoint action in m. So this one give you prim, uh, is uh, give you a controversy, a controversy class of the x in m, and we integrate integrate over a k, integrate over n, integrate uh, g n times with this function. The function is uh, k, and here's g one times up to g n and uh, uh, and then we get a gn minus one times gn and comma gn. And uh, later for this function, this part corresponded to orbital in integral. But as I said, because this C is not a group co-cycle. So in order to get a cyclic co-cycle, we need to integrate over k and n. So here is the k, this is the n. So we need to integrate also. Uh, yes, so this n has nothing to do with this n. So these two are n are different. So this n, so sorry for I abuse the notation here. This n is the dimension is a number, which is dimension of a. This n is the element in the neopotent group for n. So and f1 of g1 the product of up to fn of gn. So that uh, uh, you know if c is a cyclic, if c is a group co-cycle, then you don't need to integrate over n. You will get a cyclic co-cycle. This is a construction from uh, those uh, uh, group co-cycles. But since uh, this uh, C, the function we construct is not group co-cycle, so that uh, this is have some. It's not group co-cycle. It's a kind of a twisted version. So we need to average over n and k. And uh, as I said, because of uh, here to show it is a co-cycle, the crucial fact is that we need to use this m and a commutes and m and normalize n. Somehow we by just uh, uh, straightforward uh, <coughs> so can, computation, you can verify the co-cycle, the co-chain defined this way, it, it gives you a n-dimensional cyclic co-cycle. So this uh, uh, phi px defines a element in the uh, cyclical homology of Sg with degree n. Degree is the dimension of a. So this is uh, how we construct this uh, cyclic co-cycle. And, we, uh, and because of uh, this term, we say this is a generalization of the orbital integral in a higher sense. 
of, and if uh, you take uh, x to be identity, they can just drop this term and drop this in, in integration. So this orbital integral generalizes uh, this uh, L2 index and orbital integral simultaneously. And uh, yeah, so that uh, this is uh, work with uh, Shang, we show that uh, we get a cyclic uh, cohomology class. So as long as you have a cyclic cohomology class, then, then we can do the index pairing, we should get a number. This is, uh, oh, and uh, let me just see one thing. Let's see, consider some special case of the higher orbital integral I defined in last page. So with uh, some joint work with uh, Pierre Claire, um, Hickson, Nigel, and uh, Shantang, I believe they are all in the, all, uh, the, all uh, in the, uh, all, uh, the, the, they are all uh, here. That's uh, we, with uh, by some joint work with them, we can, um, at least it implies that uh, higher orbital integral construct uh, uh, in last page, they generate all cyclic code cycles. So that's uh, on the other hand, uh, a very interesting question, but we haven't uh, solved. We, I discussed with Shang, but we haven't solved yet, is that uh, from this viewpoint, uh, for those uh, cyclic code cycle construct from group code cycle should write as a linear combination or can be generated by higher orbital integral in this way. But uh, at this moment, it's not clear. We know because this higher orbital, the, the in, uh, higher orbital integral gener generate all cyclic code cycle. But how to write uh, those code cycles construct in the work of uh, Flom, post Puma, and Tang, it's um, not uh, that clear to us. OK, but uh, nevertheless, let's look at some special example. If the group just equal to R2, then in this case, uh, the or uh, parabol parabolic or M, uh, M, uh, M and N are trivial. So there's only one orbital integral, just take uh, X to be identity. So that uh, we write element in R2, that's Psi 1, Psi 2, we have a two parameter S and T. So that uh, our, cons our construction, this formula looks uh, not so pretty, but uh, in the case of R2, it's just uh, look like this one. Look like this one. So S1, T2 minus S2, T1 and S of Psi 1 minus Psi 2 times F1 of Psi 1. And uh, this one happened to be the case. Uh, this co-cycle co actually come from the, happened to be the same uh, uh, content in the cyclic co-cycle uh, uh, constructed in the work of uh, uh, Flum, uh, Postuma, and Town. Because in this case, the group G is abelian, so that this function C turns out to be a group co-cycle. But uh, this is only the case when G is abelian. For SO2R or SONR, this never going to happen. So that, uh, but nevertheless, that uh, this, uh, you can, by some Fourier analysis, you can check this is uh, equals to this one, where hat means the Fourier transform of the function. So it's maybe it's not uh, immediately clear why this one is a cyclic co cycle, but from the Fourier side, if you apply Fourier transform, it should be clear that this one gives you a, a cyclic co cycle. And another extreme case is that what if G has equal rank? If G has an equal rank, we can choose a special parabolic subgroup which just equal to G, a, 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 uh, G a, a, uh, a, itself. So P just equal to M equal to G. Then that in this case, if P just equal to M equal to G, then the A will be trivial. So the dimension of A just equal to zero. So, so our cyclical cycle turns out to be a zero cyclic co-cycle and this one is just uh, orbital in integral considered in the work of uh, Hawks and Wang. So that you can see uh, this is indeed a generalization of the orbital integral to the higher rank uh, case. Okay, so now I have uh, about uh, two, uh, uh, yeah, have some, so have some time. Okay, now uh, what I just showed you is that a, const a construction of cyclic uh, co-cycles, and we can get uh, higher index pairing. The next natural question is that uh, uh, the higher index pairing gave you a numerical number. The natural question is that uh, how can we compute this uh, numerical number uh, topologically? So now I'm going to state the higher index theorem, how to deduce uh, what is the topological formula look like. So in particular, I'm going to Consider X as X. This is a spin C manifold with a proper co compact action of G. And uh, W is a G covariant vector bundle on the manifold X. And uh, D is the spin C Dirac operator. 
by this uh, vector bundle W, it acts on the L this helper space. So X uh, here, X, this one is a spinner bundle. Um, X. Okay. So that's, uh, of course, uh, you can take a von Neumann trace, but as I said, if G is not equal rank, if you take a von Neumann trace or euro orbital, in the e or orbital integral, you will get uh, zero. And uh, what we do is that uh, we fix our parabolic sub subgroup. So P equal to MAN. And uh, here, uh, if P is a parabolic subgroup, well, so you can check is that uh, this group A and uh, N exit freely on X. So the manifold of X, as long as the action G is a proper and co-compact, that turns out to be a principal A N bundle so that we can form its quotient. You, we quotient out to this action of A and the action of N, we will get a N, so we will also get a spin C manifold, which is uh, with a proper co-compact action of the M. M is uh, the group from here. So now here, M has equal rank. Okay, so that uh, it is also a spin C manifold. It's a M equivalent spin C manifold. And we let L to be the determined line bundle for the spin C structure on the quotient. So because uh, it's quotient, because if the manifold uh, X is a spin C, its quotient should also be spin C. But this spin C, uh, this uh, X is a uh, uh, spin C manifold with, the G, with respect to G, also with respect to P, that is the M A N of E quotient by A N, what you still get a uh, uh, spin C manifold with spin C structure equivalent with respect to the subgroup M. So L is the determined line bound the bundle. Okay, and uh, in fact, later, next page, I will tell you the index formula we get is not uh, integration on the manifold X, but on the quotient space. So that's uh, how to descend this uh, vector G equivalent vector bundle on the manifold to the quotient. Actually, we need to do, do something here. So in order to get the right formula, we need to twist it a little bit. So this is something you won't see in the other index formulas. So that uh, the, we will define W tilde is uh, not uh, quite the uh, portion of this uh, G equivalent bundle on X. We need to tensor with, uh, this is uh, uh, this is a uh, B algebra K. This is K, inter K intersect with M. So you can form the spinner bundle for this one. We tensor with this spinner bundle then we take the quotient by a n. So roughly speaking, that is, uh, we need to twist this, uh, we, we, we first twist this uh, equivalent uh, vector bundle w, and then we descend it to the quotient space uh, x mod a n. And uh, where this term came from, actually, it is because actually this one comes from the spinner bundle on this one come part of spinner bundle. on the uh, X, because the, the reason is that the, the, the spinner bundle on the quotient are not the quotient, so are not the quotient of the spinner bundle on the X. So the extra part, we will move it to the vector bundle part. So we we'll define a new vector bundle on the quotient space. This is a M equivalent vector, uh, 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 M equivalent vector bundle over the uh, quotient space X. Okay, so this is uh, the, yeah, so this is, uh, we have a determined line bundle and we define a twisted uh, a vector bundle, twisted by, by some spinner bundle. Okay, so now it's, I can state the main result of my talk. So that the X, that X to be a semi-simple element in a group M, M is not man manifold. I think this could be, uh, um, Sorry for the confusion. So there, write down P equal to M A N is a parabolic subgroup. So here M is not a manifold, but a group, a group of equal rank. So that uh, X is a semi-simple element in the group M. And uh, this is the fixed point. This is the quotient space because this is the quotient space still have action of M and X live in M. So it has action of uh, the X. So we consider its fixed point here. And the new is the normal bundle of the fixed point uh, in here. So 
Okay, so that uh, the index pairing, what do we get? The topology, topological fo the formula we will get is that it's integration over the quotient, the fixed point of the quotient space. And the Cx is the cutout function. And uh, this is a hat cross part. This is the contribution from the determined line bundle. And this is chain character of the vector bundle W, but not quite W. Remember, this is W twisted by something else. So they have a W tilde. This is contribution from the normal bundle, from the fixed point, the, the, from the, norm, the normal bundle of the fixed uh, point. So if X equal to, if x equal to identity, then this is integration over the quotient space. So integration over the, co 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 uh, the quotient space. So from here, you can see that the topological formula we get is not integration over the whole manifold x, but over the quotient space. So you can compare uh, this formula with uh, the topological formula um, obtained by Marcos, uh, by Flam, Post, Huma, and uh, Tang. So their formula is integration over the manifold dex, but our formula is uh, integration over the quotient space. It is because our co-cycle are constructed in a different way. And uh, it's very interesting, but we don't know the answer yet, how these two formula are related. Okay, so that uh, if G is the equal rank, then that uh, we can take the parabolic uh, P equal to G and M equal to P. So in this case, uh, AN is trivial. So that uh, the X mod AN, AN is trivial. So we really integrate over the fixed point on the whole manifold of X. And uh, this uh, formula turns out to be reduced to the formula proved by Hawks and Wang, which I uh, described at the beginning. And uh, one interesting, um, 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 another remark is that uh, for general uh, reductive V group to G, in general, it have uh, uh, more than one parabolic subgroup. So for any P, we can define, for any parabolic subgroup P, we can define, uh, uh, we can define a cyclic co-cycle, we can get an index formula. But if uh, for those uh, parabolic P is not maximal in a sense, not maximal means that uh, it, um, in a sense that the rank of M so M is a reductive B group. The rank of M is the dimension of the Gadang subgroup for M. If the dimension of the sum, uh, it is not ma ma maximal if and only if the rank of M is uh, strictly less than the rank of K. But in general, if it is maximal, then the rank of M equal to rank, rank of K. If it is not maximal, rank of M is less than the rank of K. In this case, one can check that uh, this term this is, this is a spinner bundle for this V algebra quotient by this one. It's a trip as a Z2 graded a TM space. Here, TM is the, uh, TM is the Gadang subgroup of uh, M. So that uh, this one as a trivial because uh, this is a Z2 graded space. So it has a plus part and minus the minus, uh, and plus part and minus part. It is a formal, di di a formal difference. If this is non-equal rank, then this one turns out to be the plus part and the minus part turns out to be isomorphic as TM space. So it will imply this, uh, because our construction of this W tilde, we twist it by this, this, this term. So that it will imply this term equal to zero. So for even from the topological side, we can say that if the P you choose is not a maximal parabolic subgroup, then the index formula you get turns out to be zero. So that is to say, in the equal rank case, in order to get something non-zero, you have to take P equal to G. But if it's non-equal rank, P cannot equal to G. You have to take it to be maximal. And if it is maximal, you will get some non-zero uh, numerical, in the, uh, uh, you will get something, some non-zero numerical uh, number. So this is uh, the main theorem, the main theorem. So uh, let me emphasize it again. Our index formula is integration on the quotient manifold, not quite on the whole manifold. So yeah, so I still have a few minutes. And the last slides I'm going to tell you. So this, we get a numerical number, and this is how we compute this numerical number in a topological way. So as I said, I will say a little, uh, I will say a little word uh, about it's uh, how it's related to representation theory. So this is uh, my last slides. So representation theoretic interpretation. 
So if G is equal rank, then that is equivalent to say G has a discrete series representation. In this case, it's enough to detect uh, uh, the, its index using zero dimensional cyclic co-cycle. So using the, Von, the Von Neumann trace, which is tau E, you will, what you will get is a formal degree for the plunge layer measure of the discrete series or limit of discrete series representation of G. And uh, if you take a tau G, other orbital in, in the integral, you get a family of cyclic co-cycles. And those, what you will get is the character of the discrete series representation. And uh, if G is non-equal rank, there is no discrete series. So you, from this, from this two line, you can see, if there is no discrete series, these two numbers should be zero. That is uh, what happened, the vanishing result when G is non-equal rank. On the other hand, if G is non-equal rank or tempered in unitary representation or are uh, particularly uh, are obtained, in, uh, are parabolically induced from discrete series representation of M, here M always have equal rank, M always. Has, uh, has equal rank. So that's, uh, uh, because M always has an equal rank. So the numerical number we get, which can also be computed in, by topological formula or fixed point formula, that is a uh, representation theory radical interpretation that uh, if you take GX to be identity, which is generalization of the L2 index, what you, the numerical number we will get is a formal degree of the discrete series representation of M. Although G, may not have discrete series representation, but M always have discrete series representa uh, representation. And uh, if you take uh, any other semi-simple element of X, you get a family of orbital integral, what do you get? So you get a family of numbers. Those numbers turn out to be the character of discrete series representation of uh, that. So this is uh, uh, how, actually to prove, this is uh, to calculate uh, what this one is, uh, why it's, uh, formal degree or character of this one, you don't, we don't need a topological formula at all. So we can uh, calculate it. So in a, a joint work with the Shang, we calculate this pairing uh, using Harold Schindler's uh, plancho layer theory. So that's why I'm saying the plancho layer formula and this uh, higher operator integral are close related. So that is to say this pairing, those index pairing can be computed in two different ways. Analytically, we can compute it. So if you consider this one as a analytical index, it's analy anal analytical in the index can be compute uh, explicitly use Harris Chandler's plunge formula. If you go this line, you will, you will see that uh, how the number are related to representation theory. And the uh, index formula says the analytical index equals to the topological index. So on the other hand, if you compute it in a topological way, then what you get is uh, this one this uh, topological or fixed point of theory. So this is, uh, 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 to sum up, the analytic in the index is related to representation theory and the uh, topological side tells you a better way to, or, or, more, uh, or more efficient way to compute the, in the index. Yes, so that uh, I think uh, I should uh, stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any questions to Yen Li? Uh, so Yen Li, when yeah. you mentioned that this type of cyclic co-cycle generates the cyclic homology of the S of G, mm -hmm. did you actually compute the cyclic homology, I mean, of S of G? So, Yes, I think, okay. uh, but but this is I think this is uh, if I'm correct, this uh, was done by Wasserman um, um, many years ago. So the calculation. So uh, one way. So I think the calculation of the cyclic of uh, S of G has done before, but uh, I think that uh, to calculate the cyclic homology and uh, construct the cyclical cycle explicitly, I think uh, this is uh, two different story. Sometimes even if you, I think one. If I'm correct, how uh, Wasserman can calculate the thick homology of SG, he used uh, representation theory. He used uh, this uh, S of G, uh, used the Harishana theory to, uh, if you know the, what, if you know the temporal representation of G, he constructed in this way. So he calculated the, uh, uh, the um, uh, 
cyclical hom co homology. And what I am shown it is that uh, gives the explicit construction of the, of the cyclical co cycles. So, if you do the so every element in the cyclic homology group is a linear combination of yes, yes, cyclic yes. cycles of this yes. type. I, I suppose you are considering some kind of continuous cyclic homology. Yes. Right, 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 right. And uh, we know this, uh, we have to use uh, some representation theory because we know that the between, uh, so actually we have, uh, uh, this is the work of uh, uh, Pierre Claire, uh, Chris Tyrone and uh, Nigel. They have a, a very good description of the Schwarz algebra of, of G, they uh, up to Morita isomorphism. Uh, so in that way, they can, you can have a better understanding about the cyclic uh, cohomology. With their work, uh, we should be able to know that uh, this uh, higher orbital integral generalize, uh, can generate all cyclic co-cycles. So on the case, the, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, on the case side now by the work of Lafort, you know, you have a computation of K groups without involving representation theory. Can you do something similar, like on the cyclic homology side, like just somehow intrinsically, I mean, without going into the representation stuff? Oh, okay. uh, sorry, can you say, say again, what's your question? Uh, what is your question? Well, my question is that uh, on the KCD side, uh, yes. now you can compute the K, you know, K group yeah. without yeah. using representation theory. Right. I right. mean, right. you know, Wasserman in the right. time, right. well, he had to use group representation. Right. But right. I imagine you could do something similar on the cyclic homology side. You know, mm -hmm. you, you uh -huh. kind of, right. uh, maybe you need to use some kind of bivalent cyclic homology. Oh, uh, that's... Uh, Okay, I think, but uh, let me make one comment about even to calculate the uh, case theory. I think uh, to prove this uh, uh, injectivity part of the bump count for Lie group to calculate, then I guess you don't really need to use uh, representation theory. Use this topological formulas. You should be able to uh, prove the um, injectivity. But the harder part is the surjectivity. For that part, I think you have to know better about the Schwarz algebra of G. And in order to do that, you really I think at least uh, from the Wasserman's viewpoint, you really need to do the need, need to know the whole picture of the representation theory. So yeah, that's but in the Fogg's work, he does not need. Oh that. right, right, yes, yeah, that's uh, La Fogg use a completely diff different. Uh, oh oh, I I I I I see. So you are saying that uh, adapt uh, uh, La Fogg's uh, approach in the when he calculated this case theory in some uh, by uh, uh, the KK theory, this uh, banana KK theory. Can we calculate this Schwarz algebra uh, without using any representation theory? Right? Okay, so yeah, that's I my question. Yes. yes, so uh, actually, I don't know the and that uh, that's I think this is a very uh, interesting question, but uh, I don't know the answer. I think it's uh, possible, but I just I don't know. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? To BNE. Uh, could I ask one? Yes, please. John. So, um, so this is really quite fascinating, but I was wondering, is there any hope of getting similar kinds of formulas? You would have to use an algebra other than the Schwartz algebra uh -huh. um, to compute, uh, to use these index theoretic methods to compute um, characters of non-tempered representations. Oh, okay. There are some non-tempered representations that sort of basically show up in mm -hmm. things that look as if they're attached to mm -hmm. elliptic operators, but they, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're not, they're not of this kind of really nice sort. Yes, yes. Right, I totally agree with you. I think, uh, in, I think it's a very interesting direction, but in order to understand or attack this non-tempered one, I think we have to do several things. First, we should not consider just the Harshander or Lafogue Schwarz al algebra. We have to do something different with the first. And next, I think for orbital in, the in integral, we might need to consider some not semi-simple elements. For example, neopotent element. Uh -huh. 
Yes, I think it's a very, I think this is very interesting. And uh, actually we thought about it, but uh, actually we have, we talked about this, but uh, we don't have progress yet, but uh, it's definitely worth trying. Um, because uh, from this construction of the cyclical cycle, to check it, satisfy this cyclical condition, we don't wait more or less just to use some uh, group uh, structure, not to something representation theory, rhetoric, not too fancy, mm -hmm. but uh, to get to show the cyclical cycle is convergent, then we really need to use some harsh channels work. But uh, for those non-tempered, I guess this uh, conversion could be an issue. I think we should be more careful. That's why the, we need to find a more clever or better algebra to play with. I, I think, but uh, so far, uh, this is all I can tell. I think it definitely worth trying, but uh, I, we don't have progress yet. Okay, thanks a lot.